Today we're at Gentiana Nursery and we're talking about begonias. Begonias are widely grown as an indoor plant. You can grow them on patios. You can grow them outdoors if you've got the right climate. Mostly they're grown for the foliage, but some of them do have flowers as well that are quite attractive. Here's Craig from Gentiana Nursery to tell us the way that he grows begonias. Firstly, I just want to say that where I live is right on the edge of begonia country. I think any colder than this and I wouldn't be able to grow them. And, and we're in a cool temperate climate here. So the winter temperatures would be sometimes in single figures for you know two or three days at a time, but we don't get frost. Frost would be a killer. Um, so my way of getting them through the winter is keeping them really, really dry, seriously dry. Um, and the canes generally drop all their leaves and most of the rhizomes go right down here in the winter. Um, and at this time of the year, obviously, they're up and about. I think for the cultivation of begonia, there are three factors that need to be considered. The first one is light second one is water and the third one is feeding. So with light you've got these in a polytunnel at the moment Yep. and that's enough light. Well that's north, north is here so the, these canes up here actually get a full blast of sun so depending on the variety the varieties fall into three basic groups there's canes which is like this, there's rhizomes which are like these, these are all rhizomes, and the shrub-like. The rex group fall into the rhizome group, so rhizomatous. And the rex group have really, they've been very popular for quite a while. They have, and they've grown for the foliage. The flowers are pretty much insignificant. They do flower, obviously, because they're a flowering plant. So, so no, with, let's, let's just talk about the light for a bit more. Okay. So if you are growing the cane begonias, if you can give them some gentle sun, that's good, they'll like that. If you can't give them gentle sun, then you need to give them as much light as you possibly can. So, you so can't, the canes like light. So you can grow these indoors? Absolutely, yeah, but in a very light position more light the better indoors. Yep. The rhizomatous ones would take a little more shade, but then they vary. You know, this, say, erythrophylla, which is the old beefsteak begonia, would probably grow in a closet. You know, it's indestructible. Okay. Yeah. So it'll grow in quite low light levels, whereas these ones with, with leaf patterning, so that's Cleopatra, would want a bit more light. So one of the things you need to do is to know your individual species and varieties so that you can get it perfect. Get it right, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So there's no, there is a general rule, but you need to vary it a bit. That's right. And it's, it's sort of self-explanatory, really. I mean, if you see this and you see the, the dark green shiny leaf, everything about it indicates that it's a plant that's capable of growing in the shade. Whereas if you've got this variegation... Yeah, that's the, right. Yeah. Yeah, that'll take a bit more sun. So yeah, light's critical, particularly indoors. If you're growing them out on a patio, it's probably not as critical as it is inside. So indoors, good filtered light was probably... Yep. Not sitting next to a window where they can get sunburnt. That's right. Yep. But having said that, if you can get the, the, get the cane begonias next to a window and they, they're getting a, a good dose of what we would call easterly sun, so morning sun, then they'd, they'd quite like that. Okay, so the cane begonias, indoors, yeah. morning sun. Yeah. The cane begonias, my initial reaction was that they would be the ones that are the easiest to grow, but in fact I think the rhizomes are easier. Okay. Um, yeah, the canes are a little bit more fiddly, particularly during their dormancy in the cooler months. So indoors, it's probably not such an issue. So, th so these are some of the rhizomes. Yeah, this is Cleopatra, Black Beauty, surprisingly enough, Bowery Nigra, Masoniana. Okay, and that's so that's the species. And that's got wonderful foliage, hasn't it? That's right. Yeah. And the one above it. The one above it is Verbob, V-I-R-B-O-B. -B. 
That's, it's a good one. It's it's a really nice it's one. It's really too. striking. And this one's Moisei, and, and looking at it, I, I really did, never thought that I would be able to grow it here, but in fact it holds its foliage all winter. So this is a species as well? It's a species. And it's actually putting on a bit of a show of flowers too. That's right. We didn't cover as these, I don't grow too many of them, which is probably why, it's the tuberous begonias. Yes. So the tuberous begonias are completely dormant in winter, so there's no trace of them. Over that period, they have to be bone dry. So no water at all. Okay. And then when in the springtime, when you see the shoots come up off the tuber, that's when you start watering them. And from yeah. then on, it's exactly the same with the others. Wet, dry, wet, dry. And fertilised. Yeah. What, what you have to understand with the tuber is, is that the top of the tuber is very often concave. So if you're over watering them, or if they get any water, in fact, it's going to sit in that concave cavity, if we want of a better word. Yes. And rot the tuber. You've got them growing in troughs mainly? Terracotta. Terracotta? Terracotta is for, for, so that they dry out. So, so with the watering of begonia, when you water them, you completely soak them. So absolutely wet. Water them from above or put them in, it doesn't matter? I don't think it matters. Some people say you shouldn't water the foliage. I've, I've never met a plant that doesn't like getting water on its leaves. Well, they sort of naturally yeah, do that. Right. Yeah, that's right. They live in rainforests. So, so you completely soak them, so that the whole pot, you know, if I was watering this, I'd fill the pot up three times with water and okay. let it drain through. Yep. So it's completely wet and liquid feed them at the same time. Okay. Every time. And a full strength liquid feed? Just whatever's recommended on the bottle. Okay. And then you let them dry out. So... So they have to be really dry. <laughs> So the amount of time is going to depend on the time of the year? It's going to depend on so many factors and I can't tell you what the amount of time is because I don't know where you're growing them. And if you're indoors and whether yeah. you've had the heating on or whether yeah. you haven't. Yeah. So you're really looking at the old thing of the weight of the pot or putting your finger in and seeing if it's wet. That's exactly right. And if the pot's yeah. really light, yeah. it needs watering. And, and with begonia, the, leaf, the leaves are not going to show if they droop a little bit. So, you know, with some plant species, if when the leaves start to wilt, they'll get brown patches around the edges or... Yep. Yep. With begonia, that doesn't happen. So it doesn't hurt them to droop a little bit before you water them again. Okay. And it's a fair indication that they need water. Um, but what is the worst thing is to keep topping them up and keeping them moist. So they need that... They need that to cycle dry. of wet and dry is important. And this is true actually with a lot of plants really, isn't it? Pretty much most pot plants. Yeah. What people don't understand is that roots take in oxygen. So if the pot's constantly moist, then the spaces between the components of the potting mix are filled with water and the roots can't breathe. So if we talk about potting mix, now you've got a fairly open mix here. Yep, pumice and pine bark. And that's about it? Yep, that's all. So 50-50? Roughly. Yep. Oh. And uh, that drains really freely then? Very freely. Well, what you have to think about with begonia is that they're, they're an understory plant in the rainforest. So they go right around the tropics, right around the equator. And if you're growing it as an understory plant in the rainforest, then if you think of the rain coming down, it has several layers to go through before it gets to you. So it's not necessarily going to be, it's only in really heavy rain that it's actually going to soak the soil. And, and then also, <clears throat> if you're living under a, a rainforest, then the ground's going to be full of roots. Yes. So in fact, quite dry. Maintenance? Remove dead leaves. Yep. Um, not much else really. You can cut the canes back if you want. You can cut the rhizomes off at the ground if you want to. But you, if you were to do that, you'd do it at the beginning of the growing season. So that's in what, spring? Yep. And repotting them? They're not for years. Leave them and leave them alone. Okay. There's a guy that I worked for in a lender who had a begonia shafii at his front door. And he told me he hadn't repotted it for 30 years. So just... When I started there, it was looking a little bit thin and leggy. 
but that's not because it needed potting, it's because it hadn't been fed. So they do need fertiliser? They, absolutely. And when would you fertilise them? Over the warm months, so from spring through to autumn. Okay. And in the winter time, the dry is particularly important. Cold and dry is okay, cold and wet is, is death. death. <laughs> and do you only using the liquid or are you using a slow release as well? Oh, look, sometimes I'll throw a handful of slow release if, if I've got it around. But really, and, and, and foliar feeding's good. You can foliar feed them frequently. So get the old mist sprayer out. That's and, right. Yep. Yeah. Any other tips for growing those plants? I think really the, the, the thing that you need to get right is the watering. If, if I'm repotting a tray of begonia for the nursery, and there is one in the tray that looks particularly healthy and vigorous, it will be the driest. And if there's one that looks miserable and thin and dropping leaves, it will be the one that's moist. So overwatering is a really big problem. Yep, that's right. Serious problem. And I would say pretty much all of the deaths that people incur on begonia would be from overwatering. And the only other real problem would be if you've got them in really hot direct sun. Which but they'll show that on the foliage and it won't kill them. But that, that leaf will have to be removed. And so have you got a couple of favourites? I really like Taiwanese for its vigour. This one, this is a species from Taiwan. Um, and it's another one of those ones that you look at it and say, that's such a tropical, I'd never be able to grow it here. But it's very vigorous. But if you can grow it here, you can grow it in a lot of places. I, well, certainly in, in anywhere north of, of Melbourne, I reckon in the warmer climate, you'd be able to grow it in the garden. So here's Begonia angularis growing in my garden in Alinda. So in the wintertime, it will get a dusting of snow from time to time, but no frost. So it survives? Not only survives. It thrives by the look. It thrives, look yeah. Yeah. And left to its own devices, I reckon it would get up to two or two and a half metres. But I, I just pinched the tips out. So this is just in sort of dappled shade? Dappled shade, yep. Gets a, perhaps a few rays of morning sun. And the usual mulch? Yep. No different a treatment to any other plant in the garden. And this is actually lifted up a little bit with these rocks. Yes, so, right. so you've got a, you, you've got the good drainage here again. Yeah. It's Begonia grandis, so it's a tuber. So it goes right down in the winter and it will definitely grow in the garden. Well, it's growing outside. It's it... in a pot there, but I, I don't see that it will make any difference. And it's flowering sort of pretty well at the moment. Yeah, autumn flowering. So, but just no frosts and freezes. That's right. But that's, that, that's across the board. They don't like frost. With, with proper propagation of these things, you do it over the warmer months, so I'd late spring, summer would be the ultimate time to propagate begonia. With the cane begonias, you need to use a stem. You can't do them from leaf cuttings. If you try to do cane begonia from a leaf cutting, the leaves will make roots, but the cane will never develop. Okay. Okay. With the rhizomatous, oh sorry, and the shrub-like fall in with canes. With the rhizomatous, you can do them from leaf cuttings or you can divide the rhizomes. So if you're doing a leaf cutting, you, you take off the bulk of the leaf and, and just um, perhaps a bit shorter. So just put that into the prop mix like that. Okay. And what will happen is that the leaves will start to develop in here. Yeah. I don't like doing them in water. I think that the transplant from water to soil is problematic. They will make roots in water, but I'd prefer just to put the, 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 the cuttings into a um, propagating mix. So take out that middle step of the watering. There's a lot of things written about propagating things in water, but yeah. I don't I, like it. I think that it, the root systems develop differently in water. They do. So. They're a uh, wonderful group of plants for foliage. You know, there, there is in the, in the genus 2,000 species and counting, so they keep finding new ones. And that precludes the hybrids. I mean, the, the, there is a vast number of them. So if anybody says to you, you, you do, they don't like begonia, then really you should just look at them and say, what are you talking about?
because take. there are so many of them. Well, look, I'm just looking at this one here and the vibrance in that foliage. It's just amazing. There's a, and as an indoor plant, it's, it's brilliant colour. It's almost sort of luminous. Mm -hmm. That's right. And yeah, it, it amazes me that I can grow them here at all because this is unheated so far. <laughs> that may change. So I guess what we're saying is if you're looking for a great foliage plant for indoors or on a patio or in your garden, if you're in the right climate, then you should take a look at begonias. That's right, and there are so many of them, there's inevitably one that you'll like. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of indoor plants, outdoor plants, you name it. And as always, good luck with your gardening.